and quarterbacks coach Shannon Dawson. Coach, uh, your impression so far on Tyler Van Dyke and how you could see him fitting into your offense? I mean, super talented kid. I'm gonna apologize at the beginning. My voice has got some kind of sinus infection and all this stuff, right? So I'll do the best I can. Tyler, um, you know, I mean, elite player, right? My job is to, to get him to understand our offense as quick as possible. He is a good fit for our offense. He's a very accurate thrower of the football. His football IQ is skyrocket. I mean, he picks up things very quickly. So we're probably doing things. I've been here three weeks. So we're probably doing things at a rate that I wasn't probably anticipating because of him. I'm glad to have him. What about the other quarterbacks? What have you seen so far? Same thing. I mean, obviously, uh, JB has been here, so you can tell he's a mature kid. Uh, probably one of the better skill sets I've seen on a, on a kid. You know, he can do everything, really. Uh, Emery should be in high school still, right? So, you know, we're going to bring him along, but he's got some good skill sets, too. You know, we haven't put pads on yet, so I'm going to reserve the um, opinions of a lot of players. But I do like their eagerness, you know, their attitude is off the chart. So. Coach, first couple of weeks here, is there anything that, you know, caught you up hard or surprised you about, you know, when you got here about the roster, about anything in general? No, I try not to have any preconceived notions about things when I go to places. And so, you know, the only thing that I care about is, is people's attitude and effort being extremely high. And for the first three weeks, the eagerness of these guys and the attitude has been off the chart. So if we can keep that going, everything else will fall into place at some point. Why is Miami the right move for you right now? Why is Miami the right move for you right now? Why are you here? I mean, what are you talking about, man? I mean, you look at this place, right? This is an opportunity of a lifetime, you know? I mean, I grew up watching those national championships. So I pinch myself every day coming out here, wearing this you and, and being here. And I'm very blessed and very thankful and I'm going to put everything I got in to get these back to where we need to be. Coach, and your um, initial everyone... impression of the wide receivers room? Overall, Overall, I think we got some talented kids. You know, I mean, they're learning. Their heads are spinning. That position, when you install a new offense, is probably going to be one of the slower ones to grab everything because there's a lot of moving parts, right? And so they're picking up on things quickly. And... We don't have pads on, so I mean, it's hard to sit here and say who can or who can't. But we got some guys moving around out there and making some plays. Coach, everyone assumes that the air raid offense is only about passing. Um, how does the rushing game fit into that? Well, I mean, in my opinion, there's no such thing as the air raid offense anymore. Uh, that's We've evolved to be, you know, I think probably 10 or 12 years ago, probably when we went to West Virginia, we had a bunch of tight ends on the roster, so we had to figure out how to use those guys, right, and be physical and and play more into the strengths of your team, right? Running the football and playing with tight ends builds culture. You know what I mean? Builds physical culture on both sides of the ball. And so we're never going to go away from that. And, and we're going to run the ball effectively. What I found through the years, because I started my career off, you know, throwing it more than I do now, obviously, but you can throw it for more yards if you run it better because defenses will play down, right? So I don't want, I want to throw it less, but I want to throw it for more yards. Does that make sense? Yeah, and what are, what are the specific traits that you look for in your receivers that make for well, I mean, receivers? Well, every, I mean, every position is different. So you want a good mix of, of a tall guy that can, that can run and catch, right? And then some guys that can move around you know, so when you're recruiting receivers, you're really not recruiting, you know, one type of receiver. It's it's what you need, right? So you got some H's that are quick motion guys, you know, you toss it to, like we did with Tavon Austin years ago and people like that. And then you got guys that stretch the field. Not all of them have the same skill set. And so you figure out what they can do and you get them in those positions and then you recruit what you don't have. Does but, that make sense? Yeah, your specific, uh, at least in practice, <clears throat> I know it's practice, but let's say Jacoby George, Colby Young, and Xavier. Can you just do a few words on each one? Uh, start off with who? Start off with Jacoby George. Jacoby is, is right now lining up at C, you know, so we're moving him around a little bit. 
and uh, Kobe is an ex. He's a bigger guy, right? Mm -hmm. Who was the other one? The other one is Xavier Restrepo. Yeah, he's at he's at H. So he's okay. a slot receiver. So there you go. That's three guys at different skill sets. But what what are they? Can you talk a little about each and what they bring? I'm not. You know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about specific guys later on because I don't want to leave people out. That's not fair to to anybody in our organization for me to sit here and point out. I'll talk about Tyler. I mean, Tyler's the guy, right? Uh, so, but everybody else, I'm not going to get into that because there's kids out there working hard and playing hard. And if I point one kid out and not the other, that's not fair to them, especially if we had to put pads on them. If we have a scrimmage and it's live and people make plays, I'll tell you about those guys. I know there's not pads on right now, but the offensive line group from like body type, yeah. perspective, and size, and athleticism. Yeah, it's what you want. You know, they're big guys and they move well. You know, in, in today's age, old linemen have to be able to move. I don't think I've been anywhere where the size overall, now you, you typically have a couple of them, you know, but overall our size is, is off the chart, you know, we can move. And so we're just adding more people like that, which they have. We haven't seen a few of those guys yet, right? So, how, about, how about the familiarity with the staff, just the new position, the new ass, new position coaches, they're all new to Well, I'm new to me too. <laughs> right. And so that was my job coming in and to, to incorporate offensively what we can do good here, right? Because every place is different. You come in here, you see what kind of personnel they have. And it's not like you're going to change a lot offensively, but you will veer the offense ways based on people, right? And so just for instance, I mean, our tight end room is pretty loaded. So, I mean, we have a, I mean, we're in heavy sets day one, right? So that's just the way it is. It's who we are as an offense, right? So. But people-wise, I mean, you know, we, Coach Cristobal has made a couple of hires, and me and him interviewed, and I mean, look, I think we knocked it out of the park, to be honest with you, you know. So Coach Gidry, I mean, we're both from South Louisiana. Imagine that, right? And so real small towns in Louisiana, so and I've known him for a long time. It's a very unique situation where we have familiarity with each other, you know, and our compatibility is high. Coach, can I ask you a little bit about your relationship with Mario, kind of when you guys first met? Him? Yeah, so I've known him for a while. When I was the OC at Stephen F. Austin, he, he interviewed me for the OC job at FIU and uh, didn't get it. You know, he hired somebody else, which is fine. But I do think that interview led to this interview, you know, so you never know, right? You meet people, you network, you make impressions on people, and hopefully things work out in the future. And, um, I just watched him from afar, you know, everywhere I've been. And, you know, obviously he's done unbelievable things. And when this situation came up and I had an opportunity to interview, I mean, I jumped at it, you know. And then when I had the opportunity to take it, it was a no-brainer. You, um, you had an offense more. last year that relied a lot on the quarterback running the ball. And, and yeah. obviously the personnel here is different. How do you adapt as a coordinator uh, when you move to a new place? I mean, Well, you got to figure out the personnel first, right? That's part of practicing and getting to know guys. But we relied on the pass there. I mean, we had an All-American running back that tore his ACL in the spring. And then we had our next guy got hurt. And so when things happen like that, you have to figure out how to move the ball, right? I mean, you gotta, you gotta sit in there as part of planning and figuring out what your personnel is. The year before, we were the number three time of possession team in the nation, right? Why? Well, we were healthy at running back. Our defense was top 10, and we didn't need to rely on the pass game. So it all depends on how your team's built, right? And a feel for that and an understanding of where we fit into all three phases of the game is going to be important. You know, I'm not hard-headed in the sense to think that, like, my phase is the only one that matters, right? We're going to get a feel for how this team's built, and that's going to dictate a lot on how we do offensively. But I guess, I mean, your schemes are adaptable. Oh, yeah. Every scheme is. The human being sometimes isn't because they're hard at it, right? But in every scheme's adaptable. Coach, with the receiver group that wasn't necessarily highly productive, productive last year here, um, can you talk about the process of uh, how you can help this team, de you know, develop and get better in the Well, passing? through my twenty-something years of coaching, okay, we've had you know year to year to year to year, right? There's always years where, like last year. It, the previous place I worked, we had the guy that led the nation in receiving, right? So next year there, one of the guys that didn't will. Does that make sense? So somebody's going to step up. 
somebody's going to step up and, and secure that role of the go-to guy. I don't know who it is. I mean, I probably got a decent idea, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> but somebody will always steps up if you pour reps into people. We're going to pour reps and we're going to keep it consistent. Somebody will step up and be that playmaker. Thank you very much. Thanks, Coach. Sorry about the voice.